Hi, welcome back to the Liberty or Death American Insurrection playthrough. I'm Ricky Royal, this is Box of Delights, and we're heading into the French player's turn. I do have a couple of corrections from last time, but we're going to come back and we'll do those at the end. Non-player guide. Uh, we can play an event, so let's head in here. Support great in observation? <laughs> no. Um, event moves regulars, places French pieces, event inflicts British casualties. Yes, it does. Let's have a look at this event. It says Benedict Arnold shows great leadership and resourcefulness. Remove one British fort and two British cubes from one space to the casualties. But where are those spaces? What did it say? One fort and two British cubes. Not Florida, there's only one cube here. And there's two cubes here and a fort, there's two cubes here and a fort. So which one will he go for? Let's roll and see if New York or Quebec come first. Oops, that's a two and a one. That's pretty easy actually. So we're going to start, what was it? One, two. One, two, we're going to start here. And it's going to be Quebec first. That's Quebec province. And just to qualify, yeah, the rules tell us that when you're playing for the bots, you need to maximise their intent. Okay, so although there was a fort down in Florida and there's a couple of cubes here, you've got to maximise the intent. So these two were possible. So these are heading off to casualties. Um, that means we lose control because they can't control it alone. The Indian faction, and there's no more. So this one goes uh, uncontrolled. Now this is dangerous. British casualties go up by three. One, two, three. Which of course pushes the French prep up by three. One, two, three. And we're creeping closer to that critical 16. This is when the French will play their Treaty of Alliance. Okay, so above 15. And these casualties, they're not going to come back into the available resources until we hit the winter quarters round. There's a make these casualties available. Forts, though, they go straight from here back to available. Okay, so there's two forts only on the board now. That was the French playing their event. Don't like that. <laughs> Goodness me. All right, okay. So these become eligible. For the next round, Benjamin Franklin travels to France. Flip this. And we got a couple of muskets on this next one. The world turned upside down. For the current event though, Benjamin Franklin travels to France. It would be the Patriots and the French, but they've both acted, so it would be British and then the Indians. So we'd get first dibs at this one. Um, it says that... Franklin is ineffective in France. Shift any two cities, one level each, towards active support. That's pretty good. But with the Indian nation available, if I take command, then I know that the Indians will take that event. Yeah, so that might be good. All right, let's let the Indian nation take that event. They're going to help me push support up because opposition is a lot higher than support right now. Remember we need more than 10, more than 10 to win. Uh, at the moment they're in a good, they're in a good place. So let's think a little bit more about what's coming next. French are going to act first because the, the Indians are going to act this time and it would remove two British regulars on the map to casualties. Man, so more casualties. We don't want them to take that event. So if I act now, the French are going to take this. If I take this event next time, I get to place one friendly fort. Problem is the French are going to act before us anyway, so we're going to lose. Yeah, we're going to take some casualties next time. So let's think about what we want to do. Let's talk a little bit again about victory conditions, because I've alluded to the victory conditions, but I've not actually told you how this works in a solo game. Uh, things are a little bit different in the solitaire game. To succeed, 
Remember, there's four winter quarters, and each winter quarters has a victory check in it. We can't win ourselves during that victory check playing solo. Okay, So the British can't forcibly win during one of those victory checks. Instead, we've got to survive those four winter quarters without one of the other factions winning. Okay, So that's how things have turned around a little bit playing solitaire. And not just that, if we do survive past the fourth winter quarters, we've also got to have the, the highest victory margin. Now remember our margin to victory? We need to have more than 10 support versus opposition. Okay, So to have a positive victory margin, our support must be higher than the opposition. So even if we survive the winter's quarters and our support is lower than opposition, we're still going to lose. Okay, And the same for casualties. All right, so we need to have fewer casualties, even if we don't have enough in the way of margin. There's also a way to score those margins, and um, maybe I can show you that if and when we get there. I may just finish up when we hit the first winter quarters. I'll see what the appetite is for, for carrying on and how much of the rules we've covered. As it goes, we've got to make a decision. Um, I might try and get some more forces on the map from available, but I'd like to show you some of these other actions as well. Um, an interesting point too, playing solo. Remember, we're playing one faction. I mean, you could play two, and then you've got more decisions to make, right? You can make decisions for the Indian nation as well, the Indian faction. I mean, that's the thing about the, the solo game. I'm going into quite a little detail about the, how the non-player factions work. Um, and you're following flowcharts and stuff. And this kind of gives this game very much a wargaming feel, all right? where you're actually watching things act out on the board without so much interaction. But do remember, everything that the non-player factions do, the AIs do, is influenced by the decisions that we make. All right? And there's a little bit of randomness in there with the die rolls as well. So although there's quite a lot of you know following the script and acting things out, that's part of what this, this game is about. It's a part of what War Gaming is about. It's about watching the battle unfold. I mean, if you really like that kind of stuff, you could even play with four non-player factions. In fact, there's a thread going on on Board Game Geek where they're doing exactly that. They're playing with four non-players to see how the bots play against each other. Um, but your decisions are influencing what they do, and an awareness of what they're going to do will make you better at making your decisions. So I think what I'm going to choose to do is a, not a garrison, I think we'll do a march, a march command. Okay, so in a location, any spaces except a blockaded city. They're not blockaded until the French get busy. Um, and the idea here is to enter areas, locate militia and gain control without using your available forces. Now ideally, like I say, you want to be distributing your available forces around the map and then moving them, redeploying them using the march commands. There is a garrison as well. This allows you to protect cities with moving your British forces into those cities and kicking out the rebellion forces. But now though, I think... All right, I'm, I'm concerned a little bit about New York, but let's show you the march. Now to march to a destination, you pay one resource per destination. I've only got one resource, so I'm only going to be able to pick one destination. But I can move from all sorts of places to that destination, as long as there's a path there. I was tempted to take Philly, or even grab control back of Quebec. No, I think we'll take Philly. That's our destination. And the good news is you can move from any city to any city, these uh, regulars. I mean, the other way to do paths is you can move from any city to any city, um, and then you can move to a uh, a province adjacent to a city. So we could make, say, Maryland, Delaware our destination, and we could move forces, say, from New York to Philly, and then from Philly to Delaware, or we could move from Quebec to Philly to Delaware. All right. The other thing about moving to Delaware is you can move adjacent, so we could move it in, in, in from Pennsylvania. Actually, why don't we do that? Let's, let's choose Maryland, Delaware. So we'll take one from We'll take two from New York City, so they'll go to Philly and then into Delaware. In fact, we're going to take another one from Penn and we're going to take another one from New York. Well, I can't take any from New York, can I? Actually, I can. 
because you can move from a province to an adjacent city. Let's take two. Then from city to city. And then from a city to an adjacent province. All right? So that's how marching works. So you can push stuff all over the place. So now we control Maryland and Delaware. The other thing about marching, if we had chosen Philly, for every three cubes in the destination you activate one militia. So we would have put them out of action. But no, I'm happy with that. We've taken control of Maryland, Delaware. We could use a special activity if we wanted. Do you know what? I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to move in here instead and still control of Philly. Activate this. And then I think I can use a special activity that will leave one regular back here. Alright, I'm happy with that. That spends my last resource. I'm heading into command and special activity because the special activity I'm going to take is skirmish, which allows me in a space with regulars and rebellion pieces to remove one active militia. And that skirmish action is going to send those militia to the casualties box. That's more like it. The rebellion casualties are now back up level with ours. And we've got a couple more options when you're skirmishing. Skirmishing is pretty cool. Um, you can destroy one rebellion cube or an active militia, not an underground one, uh, for, for free. So you can see how active militia are more vulnerable. Um, or you can take two, but you lose one of your own uh, forces. And you can even take a Patriot Fort, but lose one of your own as well. Okay, so there's a few different options there. And that's a key point to understanding special activities, really, is that they're, they're done in combination with a command. Okay, so as long as it's not a limited command, you're kind of doing them simultaneously. So think of it simultaneously, so you can kind of back, back and forth a little bit. Not all special activities are compatible with all commands. Okay, so Indian Nation's going to go next. They can do the event or limited command. I think we know that they're going to do the event already. And that is to uh, shift any two cities, one level each, towards active support. Let's roll those dice to get us started. What I'm going to do this time is show you the... That's a 4-1. show you the use of the map instead of the, the chart. You might find it more helpful. Depends how you visualise things. Um, so 4-1 starts us off in Connecticut or Rhode Island. So if we look on the back of this, this chart, you've got a map here instead. Which is here on the map. So now we just follow the arrows instead. So the arrows kind of reflect that flow of that chart, you see. So we're looking New York City. Yeah, okay, so there's a there's a token there we can flip. Active support, so that's um, an extra two here because it's uh, it's a high population. You'd kind of think it would do the maximum populations first actually wouldn't you? Yeah, in the in the interest of maxing out, I think it would have done New York City first. Let's roll again, find the second one. And now we've only got population one cities left, so it will be any any city. So three two starts us at sorry, two three starts at Savannah, which is down here. So yeah, one support. Five, uh, we're eight versus ten now. Much more positive. That's this event complete. Coming up next is the world turned upside down. And then we've got Cherokee supplied by the British. Um, we've got the French and then the Americans, the Patriots, sorry, acting. They've got a musket here. It'd be good if we saw a special event, but we're not going to because the French are going to go here because they'll want to put some casualties out. Remove two British regulars on the map, two casualties. Let's roll. 
We've got one, three, so we're going to start our search in North Carolina, which is here in the middle, and there aren't any British regulars there. So we'll follow the map down to Savannah, Florida. There's only one here, so we'll skip past Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, all the way over to Boston, Massachusetts, from there up to Quebec City. Did it say cubes? No, British regulars. Over to Quebec, then New York. There's only one there. I did that on purpose because I didn't want him taking those. From New York up to New Hampshire, New Hampshire down to Connecticut, Rhode Island, and then from there to New York City. So New York City it is, two regulars from here into the casualties. All right, so there's a good little flow, isn't there? One, two. Um, that's going to put the French prep up two spaces. They're almost there. I and mean, this is the point, really. They're trying to get themselves um, towards that first brilliant stroke, that uh, Treaty of Alliance. We may see that soon because it looks like the US are going to try and do the command and may add a special activity. So this is going to be a good turn for the Patriots. However, I do need to correct a mistake from last time. Thanks to Mike Berticelli who was watching the series closely. I couldn't put that there uh, because you need a Tory. Okay, so when you muster royalists here, you can only boost support if you have Tories there. So I need to correct that. So that's one less resource spent and one more correction from last time. When I traded here, activating this war party gets you the first resource free. You don't have to take that from the British. It's only if you trade more than one that the British then have to sacrifice resources. Okay, so we should have one more resource for the British. That pushes me back up to two resources, which maybe I could have spent, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I can use them. I can use them later. And obviously that uh, pen was... Pennsylvania was population 2, so we lose 2 support. We must remember those Tories. With that last bit in mind, the other thing to be aware of is that you can move Tories when you're moving. So when I did that move, but you can only do one Tory for every one regular, right? You can't move more Tories than you move regular. So I could have moved one of these in instead of one of these in. Make sense? So remember that was via New York City. So remember those two rules. Marching, you can bring Tories with you. When you muster, you can only increase with one resource. You can only increase your support if you have at least one Tory in the space with you. Right, that's it for now. Join me next time, and hopefully we'll cover some of the other aspects like leaders and brilliant strokes, and we may even see the French entering the game.